Colonel Frederick de Peister Jr. was a Civil War veteran. He was born December 13th in 1842 and died October 30th in 1874. He is buried in St. Paul's and Trinity Parish Cemetery in Tivoli, New York. We read about the sacrifices made by our military and rightly laud our veterans. The de Peister family intimately knew about the paradox of service, the glory and subsequent loss. Three de Peister brothers, all in their teens when they volunteered for the Union case, returned to their lives in New York State. Two of the three, eldest brother Colonel John Watts de Peister Jr. and his younger brother Colonel Frederick de Peister, referred to as Fred and named for his grandfather Frederick, died about a decade after their service due to the physical suffering related to their experiences at war. Colonel Frederick de Peister Jr., the son of General John Watts de Peister and Estelle Livingston de Peister, died at Rose Hill in Tivoli and is interred in the de Peister vault at St. Paul's Episcopal Church Cemetery on Woods Road. A decade before his death, on September 7, 1864, Frederick married Mary Livingston, a great-granddaughter of Chancellor Robert Livingston and the only daughter of Claremont Livingston, according to Frank Alabin's John Watts de Peister, Volume 1, published in 1908. Alabin continued of Frederick. He had issue. Mary, who was born on the 22nd of December in 1865 and died on the 9th of September, 1874. Claremont Livingston, born on the 12th of June in 1867, who studied at Harvard and Oxford and who died unmarried on the 2nd of December in 1889. Soon after his daughter's death, Frederick predecessed his wife and son. The deceased gentleman, though a young man, had gained honors both on the field of battle and in the pleasanter meads of literature, states his obituary. At the beginning of the late war, Colonel de Peister, then a mere boy, entered the volunteer service in which, from time to time, he earned promotion until, when the conflict ended, he bore the brevet rank of colonel. When he returned to the peaceful pursuits, he applied his pen to the illustration of military subjects. His contributions to the literature of the war were marked by careful thought, a wide study of military history, and an excellent literary style. He wrote for the magazines, and his articles in one of them on the Battle of Chancellorsville were very skillful portrayals of the section of that great contest. Colonel de Peister was a member of the old family of that name, resident of the city. Frederick's father, General John Watts de Peister, commemorated his son's death. He described the memorial in a book he authored on local memorials in 1881 as follows. Westward of this is a large and extremely tasty marble memorial of a young and handsome Union officer who died of the ultimate results of expors and diseases contracted during the Peninsular Campaign of 1862. On the obverse are a few lines, setting forth his name, rank, and see as follow. Frederick de Peister, Jr., Brevet Colonel, N.Y.V., Brevet Major, U.S.V., Born in New York City, 13th December, 1842. Died at Rose Hill in the township of Red Hook, Dutchess County, 30th October, 1874. Of diseases contracted in the field with the Army of the North, Eastern Virginia in 1861, and with the Army of the Potomac in 1862. The monument indicates de Peister achieved 4th Corps Badge, 2nd Division A of the P, and that his remains are in his father's John's vault west of the church. Of his son, de Peister adds, as he discharged both line and staff or medical duty in one of the New York regiments, which was considered as belonging to the artillery, a 10-pounder parrot gun, which had performed service in putting down the slaveholders' rebellion, is planted at the corner of this monumental plot, which is guarded from intrusion by an apparently simple but costly fence of strong wrought iron standards set in block of stone, connected by heavy rods of the same metal. Frederick predecessed his wife, Mary Livingston de Peister, by two years, 
She passed away in July 1876.